So now what we're going to do is, this um, is the end of the short circuit section. Let's extend this and go to protective device coordination. When I click on this, you're going to see the toolbar change again. Now everything to the right of my mouse is the same short circuit engine we were just using. So I'm not going to get into detail and explain all that. This first button on the left is plot curves. Um, open TCCs and delete TCCs. That's the only changes that we've made. So I'm going to just put this back up on the top. So how do we determine what we want to um, plot? Well, in Easy Power, if we're going to plot a time current curve and see how it functions, we have to tell the program what we want to look at. In this case, if we wanted to look at this breaker and this breaker, we would highlight those and look at that information. But if I wanted to look at this entire feeder, it's just as easy to left mouse click, press slide release. I can come up and hit this little button and it's going to create the one line for me on the left hand side and it's going to create the um, uh, time current curves on the right hand side. Now what I want you to see on this is the one line that we've look, we're looking at over here on the left hand side. Remember the other motor control center contributions um, from this switchgear lineup? They are still there. You're just not looking at them on the one line. The daisy chain transformer is still here. It has contributions and back feeds to this system. So the entire network model is perfectly intact. It's still part of this system so that when I hit this short circuit button, all my short circuit currents are identical to the main network system because it is. We're just looking at a different view. Now over on the right hand side of the system are my time current curves. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this um, title block. Um, we'll, we're going to um, get rid of that so you can see this information a little bit um, larger. Now we do that by clicking this little button. So now you can see that a little bit better. Now the key things to note as we're looking through this, remember when, when we were in the time current curve tab of this transformer? If I, if I click on this, you'll see the time current curve tab where we plot the 100% withstand, the unbalanced derating, and so on. Okay. Notice that here is this damage curve. That's what we were plotting. That's the 58% uh, damage curve. Here's the 100% damage curve. Um, so all that information is there. Here's the magnetizing inrush for this transformer. Here are the short circuit currents through each device. Here is the motor starting curve for this motor. And I could come over here and click on this motor and here's my TCC tab describing that information. So we can determine whether this is a full voltage, an auto transformer, a part winding, Y delta, reduced voltage starter, any way we want. We can modify all our locked rotor um, multipliers and asymmetrical offsets and things. So here are all the different protection um, boundaries, our locked rotor asymmetrical, locked rotor symmetrical, acceleration time, full load amps, motor stall time, thermal damage curve. Here are my conductor damage curves. Everything that we need to set these protective devices is available to us. Now, how do we do that? Well, if you put your mouse, the tool tips don't come up, remember, um, in this video. Um, so, actually, it, it, it does in this um, case when I drag. So you can see the different settings that are available. So I can drag my, my curve just by clicking and dragging. So I can set these devices. I can move the fuses in any manner I choose. Um, my relays are set and so on. Now, we won't get into a course on protective device coordination at this point in time, but you can see if I drag this over to 1.5 that this motor starting curve is going to trip. So I need to set it above these protection boundaries. In this case, if I had a locked rotor jam, my motor um, stall time okay, is going to burn up here at 10 seconds and my uh, long time delay band does not protect me until I get it down to a 1.0 demand and so on. So you can see 
exactly how we go about this protection. The key points that you want to look at are how do you determine the time differences between different uh, devices. Well, in EasyPower and in all Windows programs, if you want to highlight multiple devices, you hold the control key and left mouse click. And so I just highlighted these two devices. I can right mouse click, insert a difference calculator, and you can see the um, uh, time separation. Now if I drag this, notice how if I set it at time dial 1, I have um, 0.142 seconds of safety margin. If I set it at 1.1, um, I have 1.87 and so on. So I can determine based on the type of device exactly how to set this. I can also scroll this over and look at my min, max, or differential at any point in the system to make sure that I'm right on. So that's how we do that in Easy Power. It's, it's very, very simple. One of the things that you need to know when we're doing this is if I look at the time current cur um, one line diagram, notice that as I make a change over on the left, it automatically changes on the right. This is key. Um, I don't know any other program that does this, um, but it allows you to create the one line only once. It's completely documented without the user doing anything. Okay, so you, no matter what, this w one line diagram documents the system to any changes that you make, even to the point if, if I want to go and add arc flash, here's my arc flash values. So you can have time current curves for arc flash, you can have time current curves for showing uh, the protective device settings and they can all be saved and printed. So um, that's the really cool thing. Let's, since we're here, let's get into ArcFlash a little bit. Now, look what happens. In this case, I have 110 calories of energy. I'm actually using the worst case calculation right now. 110 calories of energy, a 387 inch ArcFlash boundary, extreme danger. Look what happens as I change the curves. Notice this is dynamic. As these curves change, so does my arc flash hazard. Notice what it does is in order to get a number 4 PPE, I have to have a very, very low setting. Well, what that's going to do now is that allows my a 480 volt fault on this bus to trip the upstream relay before the secondary main not a good thing because now I shut down multiple transformers that are daisy chained in the system. So what's cool about this is it is completely dynamic. Easy Power shows you exactly what's going on in the system with just a click and a drag. And so now you can do your your settings, verify your arc flash without going through doing, you know, a hundred different time current curves, going and doing arc flash, finding out they're all wrong, you can interactively work on short uh, protective device coordination and arc flash at the same time, weigh the balancing effects of your settings and minimize um, any mistakes. This cuts off weeks and weeks and weeks worth of t study time. So it's really a sl slick, slick deal.